Hey everyone, this is J Dog, and I'm here with another video. The man you see over here, or uh, I use the term man loosely, is none other than Pete Bootages. Pete Bootages, or Pete Bootages. You know, he's a man that I do not trust. He is running for the Democratic nomination for president he is trying to become the president by beating donald hoping he's hoping to beat donald trump <laughs> however i do not trust this man this man does not preserve deserve the trust of the black community and i'm going to give you a lot of reasons why now no none of them is because of his sexual orientation he is uh an lgbt man he is a gay man. He has a husband. Um, and no, the LGBT community is not the reason why I do not like this man. His orientation, sexual orientation, has nothing to do with my hatred for Pete Buttigieg. However, did you know this, that the people who don't like him, some of the people that don't like him, happen to be part of his own community. It says here why some le lesbians don't want Pete Buttigieg to be president. So, uh, why Pete Buttigieg or Booty Jizz, that's why right, Booty Jizz, you know, those are where I'm going with that. You know, why he can't read LGBT media anymore, I guess because people have, uh, even the LGBT community doesn't want his behind. I'll leave a link to this particular area where you can look at all these different articles and stuff, and there might be more. Um, this says here why the LGBT media has attacked him, saying he's the wrong kind of gay. This is from Pink News. He's the wrong kind of gay. So, and oh, by the way, um, Pete Buttigieg is the mayor, uh, I forgot what the town he's the mayor of. Um, oh, um, South Bend, Indiana. So, if his own community, the LGBTQ community, doesn't want him, think he, they can't trust him, he's one of them, what does that have to say? If, if, he, if LGBT don't think he's going to do anything for the LGBT community, the fact that he is LGBT, um, then what do you think, he, why you what, what what makes people think he's going to do stuff for other communities, in particularly our community, the black community? I mean, look at him. Look at this face right here. He, he look look how upset he looks. He, he's probably looking down, looking all upset because he people don't like him. Not even his own community that likes him. Uh, not to mention, speaking of the black community, this guy has had a lots of trouble getting black votes. He's just not getting the black vote. He has been hammered by the black community, and rightfully so. He is not getting our vote, which means he will not win. He won't even get the nomination. He's a piece of garbage at the debates, so he's going nowhere. Hell, look at this article. He says, see, this is right here. Pete Buttigieg says he can't fire racist cops. That's not the whole story but i remember didn't you fire got a black police chief fired who wanted to expose racist cops didn't you hide a recording of racist cops yeah this is here right here this is him praying and yeah, look at he's praying please vote for me please ignore my history please my own community doesn't like me. The L not even my own community. The LGBT community doesn't like me. Please vote for me. Uh, yeah, right. Like, uh, like I'm going to do that. If he's the nomination, uh, I just won't even vote, period. This man cannot even be trusted by his own community. Why should he be trusted by the black community? He is against reparations. He refuses to make racist cops accountable for their actions his own community don't like him 
So what makes you think our community and other communities should should defend him? I mean, I was looking at this one tweet from Tariq Nasheed. Look at him. Look at this. See, once again, every once in a while, you have some stupid, ignorant coon or sambo try to uh, basically look. He's trying to. This is this. Look at this. The 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 the, the forty ounce, the paper bag. That's a stereotype. He thinks he can do this to get to black people, or at least stupid, idiotic coons and sambos that will fall for his stick. Uh, by the way, shout out to Tariq Nasheed. Can anyone? Can you all let? let uh, this is what he's the, what tweet, Tariq Nasheed says. And shout out to Tariq Nasheed. By the way, can you all let Mayor Pete Booty j- j- gig? It should have said uh, Pete Booty jizz. Know that doing goofball stereotypical stunts like drinking liquor out of a brown paper bag with a couple of non ADOS first generation immigrants will not integrate him with foundational black American voters. Yeah. I once again shout out to Tariq. I'll even leave a link to this link to this in the description box of comment section. But look at this. Just just look at this. Your new moon slide. Yes, sir. All right. A toast to you and to oh, us, yeah. your new moon squad. All right. Wait a minute. Isn't those, those the two idiots from that um this one show that's on Showtime? I forget what their names are, but it turns out they're not even ADOS, like Tariq says. Uh, Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders reaching out to black birders in 1986. I remember seeing that. Yeah, right. That's the two idiots that have the show on Showtime. I, I can't even think of their names like I even want to. Like I even, I could care less. I could freaking care less. What the hell? What? It, these idiots, these retards right here, had the nerve to show a stereotypical idiotic seat. To this, 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 this moron, Pete Booty Jizz. That's why I'm gonna keep calling him Booty Jizz. Booty Jizz. Um, uh, the whole thing, thinking that this is gonna get black votes. No, this is, this is stereotypical. And he has to hide behind these two morons, these two coons and sambos. Jesus Christ. And then look, he'll pray, please black people vote for me. I drank a 40 ounce in a bag with two idiots. Please vote for me. Yeah, you drank with a bunch of coons. I also want to give out, a, uh, now I want to show you something else. First of all, once again, I want to give out to Jamian B. Fowler. I'm really liking this this guy, this, this Jamin B. Fowler. I'll leave a link. To hit to this video. Also, I want y'all to go to this man right here, um, Jamin B. Fowler. I want y'all to subscribe to um, follow him on Twitter. Um, I might even leave the link to his Twitter to his homepage. Uh, he's an activist. Uh, this guy has been getting at um, going to these different politicians and asking for reparations and for a black agenda. Uh, he he is doing what he's putting the pressure on these 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 politicians and stuff. I like what um, Jamin B. Fowler is doing, and one and I think the last time I talked about Jamin B. Fowler, he was going after Bernie Sanders, and I think one time he was going after Kamala Harris. I think. Um, but yeah, I, I, he's putting the pressures on these politicians. He's asking about reparations. And you see that these coward politicians will try to walk away from him, try to hide from him. But like I said, y'all need to follow uh, Jamin B. Fowler. Uh, yeah, if, so if y'all have Twitter, y'all need to follow Jamin B. Fowler. But this guy right here, Jamin B. Fowler, with his bravery, decided to go after Pete Buttigieg, and this is what happened. Oh, I get the feeling I'm being recorded. 
Oh yeah, you're being recorded all right. Once again, shout out to Jamin B. Fowler. So, Jamin B. Fowler is recording him. Uh, yeah. I, you, you see, B. Booty Jizz is getting very nor- nervous. I wonder what's going to happen next. Yes, sir. Uh, you were spoken on the doubles plan earlier. Um, a few statistics. Uh, black Americans are 14% of the country, population-wise. Yeah, we own around 2.6% of the wealth in this nation. My question is twofold. There's been a lot of talk about reparations. Where do you stand personally in principle regarding cash payment reparations for the descendants of American slaves? And if you don't support that, where do you stand, what closes that black-white racial wealth gap? So first of all, there is no question that this racial wealth gap is a consequence of systemic racism in this country. Now, I support H.R. 40, uh, the bill that has been proposed in the House to create a commission uh, that will evaluate reparations. But I don't think we have to wait for that commission to do its work to do certain other things. And that's what's in the Douglas plan. The way I think of it is, is this. If I save a dollar today at 5% interest, it's going to turn into $2 and then $4 and then $8. And actually, if it stays in that bank account, 150 years from now, my descendants would have $1,000 off of that $1. Now, if that's true for a dollar that's been saved, that's also true for a dollar that's been stolen. And what has been stolen from black Americans is generational opportunities to build up wealth. And so we shouldn't be surprised that when slavery ended two lifetimes ago, less than two lifetimes ago, uh, that we continue to see the consequences of that, in addition to things that are not from some distant, far off, point past, but happened within living memory. The inability of people who returned from war to access the, the GI Bill. All right, so there's basically a part two. I think this is part two right there. Let's just check it out. The government got involved in the 40s and 50s than they were before. This happened within living memory. So what we've learned is you can't just get to 2019, replace a lot of these racist policies with neutral policies, and say, okay, now everything's going to take care of itself. It doesn't work that way. Or if it does, it'll take hundreds of years. So we've got to act now to address this. This is not doing somebody a favor. This is not giving anybody anything they didn't deserve. This is based on the basic moral principle that when something is broken, you fix it. When something has been stolen, you restore it. And we can do that. And the whole country will be better off. So it's why I propose, in addition to uh, making sure that we deal with the racial inequities in our criminal justice system, for example, that we also look at an economic empowerment. We look at things like entrepreneurship. It's why I propose that the federal government set a 25% target of doing business with minority-owned and women-owned businesses uh, to lift up economic opportunity. It's why we should be co-investing in the work of black entrepreneurs and community development financial institutions, because that economic empowerment is just as important as the disempowerment that's going on in an unfair criminal justice system. We've got to deal with housing, education, health, voting. All of these things are connected. And that is a matter of principle, but it's also something that majority white audiences need to be thinking about and hearing about. Uh, Because while there is no question that uh, black Americans uh, who have been literally excluded from full participation by law until the 60s, and in a lot of other ways right now in the American economy, it's also true that this entire country is worse off until we fix it. Everybody has a st- stake in dismantling systemic racism. That's why it's a priority for me, no matter who I'm addressing. First of all, once again, shout out to Jamin B. Fowler. He asked a good question. Of course, Peter Booty, uh, Bo- Booty Jizz responded with some way to evolving black-owned businesses and stuff. Although I still ask the question how the policy she's just saying this frederick douglas policy how is this going to help black people and if it is going to help black people i'm not saying it is or isn't uh is um is he going to go through with any kind of policies to help black americans one reason why i still don't trust Buttigieg is because of his his is Buttigieg's history firing the racist um uh, not firing the racist cops yet firing a black police chief um, 
Now, once again, shout out to Jamin B. Fowler. He asked a very good question. And I think... Now, um, I'm still not trusting Buttigieg. I, I still want to know how he um, how he's going to help, uh, if he's really going to be for reparation, if he's going to give us checks, and if he's trying to do policies to help black-owned businesses, will he really do policies for black-owned businesses and stuff? Um, I'm glad that Jamin B. Fowler was there asking that question, but that's what more of us need to do when it comes to these politicians, ask these these difficult questions and put more pressure on these politicians. So as you see here, he represents Tangibles 2020, cut the check, us too. Uh, he even believes, um, him and Tariq Nasheed also believe um, this new one, this Reparations Rainbow, that's something I probably might talk about in the video. That's one that's trying to help even LGBT blacks who happen to be descendants of slavery, because there are LGBT people who are African American or biracial who are the descendants of slavery. And even I agree that they should get reparations if they have are have that lineage, if they respect their blackness, if they are fighting for the black community and getting reparations and stuff like that. That's that's how, like I said, that's another story. But um yeah, by the way, I wonder if Pete Buttigieg being part of the LGBT, is he going to help black LGBT who uh, um, get reparations who happen to be descendants of slaves? I'm not even sure if he's going to help make sure that that gay reparations that was just passed is going to help get black gays to getting the reparations as well. Yeah, Pete Buttigieg better be doing that. Otherwise, there's more reasons why to not trust Pete Buttigieg. But right now, even that what he just says, there still needs to be more. Uh, I, I still do not trust Pete Buttigieg. And I don't think he's going to win. He, Like I said, his poll numbers, especially with black votes, it, it, it's getting worse. Uh, he probably will be among the next few, later on in the next few weeks or months, or about a year, when it really counts, he's going to drop out. I bet you he's not even going to be picked to be a running mate for the person who does win the Democrat nomination. I, I, and I, I, I don't trust, I still don't trust Pete Buttigieg. Once again, uh, um, he better, uh, he's, uh, Pete Pete Buttigieg is going to have to do a lot to get the black vote now. A lot of these politicians have to. Because right, right now, I'm not feeling Pete Buttigieg, regardless of what he just said in that, in that, in those two videos, in that two, those two part videos. I am not trusting Pete Buttigieg. And I, I still don't think Pete, Pete Buttigieg needs to be president. He is not going to be our president. He will not win. But all the stuff I just showed you, I will leave the link to in the description box and comment section. The, the t certain tweets, the articles, um, and other things. I will leave the links to them in the description box and the comment section. Plus, speaking of that comment section, I want to know what y'all think um, about this, about Pete Booty, uh, Booty Jizz, um, and what you have to say about this uh mr booty jizz um um that's all i gotta say um make sure you like the video share the video subscribe if you haven't subscribed i'll also leave the links to all the different accounts that i have for y'all to follow me on uh, whether it be on youtube twitter black junction uh, black shares all the all my different accounts all my backup channels and all that will be in the description box and comment section along with the information that i'm also putting on here um, make sure you like and share the video make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell wherever regardless website that you follow me whether that you post the videos every once in a while I'll check to make sure if i'm doing something new or not in case if you're not getting any notifications um, on your own time, but that's all I have to say for now. This is J-Dog. Thank you for watching. I know this is a long video, but thank you for watching, and I hope to catch y'all in another video. Peace, everyone.